External graphics solutions are having a moment right now. What used to be a dark art involving hacking a hole into your laptop or dismantling your mini PC can now be done with a single, nearly universal high bandwidth cable. Now that the industry at large is finally adopting the concept of plugging small computers into big graphics cards, does it finally make sense? These days, pairing a full-size desktop graphics card with a mini PC or thin and light laptop is a bit more official than it used to be. In fact, there are at least two ways of plugging an eGPU into modern PCs with a single cable. Last week, I looked at Oculink, a less common connector standard, but one that promised some big performance. Today, I'm looking at the more common one. Thunderbolt is a high bandwidth standard for connecting external devices that has generally been quite spotty in terms of compatibility in the past, often using more obscure ports that haven't really found their way into many computers. That has changed in recent years, and now Thunderbolt Gen 4 uses the USB Type-C connector, meaning there are more eGPU compatible PCs than ever. My test platform for this video is a Geekom GT13 Pro Mini PC, which was provided by Geekom for testing free of charge. The GT13 Pro has an Intel i9-13900H CPU, with 6 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores built on the Raptor Lake architecture. Despite being at least a generation old at this point, it still has plenty going for it. In Cinebench R23, it scores 14,000 points in multi-core and a whopping 2,000 points in single-core, which puts it in the ballpark of full-size desktop chips. Geekbench scores over 12k in multi-core and 2.8k single, and the TimeSpy CPU score of 11584 is one of the best I've ever seen. There are two things that let it down, one being thermals, which are unfortunately a fact of life with previous gen intels, especially in mini PCs, the other being the iGPU. In Geekbench, the Iris Xe graphics only scores about 16.5k in OpenCL and 20k in Vulkan, and the TimeSpy graphics score of 1723 is about 500 points less than a GTX 960. In short, from a gaming perspective, it has a V8 engine, but the wheels of a shopping trolley. It lacks an Oculink port, or even the option to add one. The only spare M.2 slot on the motherboard is a B-key SATA slot, which my Oculink adapter won't fit into, and would be a serious bottleneck even if it could. Thankfully, the GT13 Pro has two full-bore USB 4 ports with Thunderbolt, meaning we have easy access to a range of external GPUs. As well as the more polished Thunderbolt eGPU housings from brands such as Razer, Sonnet, Akitio, Blackmagic, etc., and the horrifically expensive all-in-one units from people like GPD Win, there are the cheaper, jankier options available for those who care more about how much they spend and less how the whole thing looks on their desk. The one I have here is the snappily named TH3P4G3 dock, manufactured by uh, probably a couple of nerds in a workshop in Shenzhen. The name is, I guess, functional, probably stands for Thunderbolt 3 something 4 Gen 3 but in leet speak it reads as The Page, and I'm surprised more people haven't picked up on that yet. The Page can be bought from AliExpress from as little as £100, or for a whole lot more than that on Amazon and eBay, and whichever way you buy it, you still have to provide your own power supply, and of course, graphics card. It's a pretty bare-bones unit, just a PCB shrouded in metal, with a couple of brackets for ATX or SFX power supplies, and yet it still has all the necessary ports, including a USB-C socket for connecting to the PC. And it's even 65W PD enabled, negating the need for a second mains power cable for lower power devices. There's a second USB-C for daisy-chaining other devices, which is another nice feature to have, but for the sake of maximising power to the rather thirsty CPU, I'm not adding any additional devices to the dock, and I'm using the GT13 Pro's supplied 120W mains adapter to power it. 
When it comes to the GPU, I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti, powered by an EVGA 750W PSU. Both would seem to be a bit overkill. The graphics card only needs about 400 watts max, but it also needs three 8-pin PCIe connectors, which you won't normally find on less than a 500 watt PSU. The 3080 Ti is still a pretty powerful GPU, so you might think there's a danger that the mobile CPU would act as a bottleneck. And that's definitely true, but if bottlenecks put you off, then uh, buckle up, because that ain't the worst of it. Current gen desktop CPUs connect to graphics cards via up to 16 lanes of 4th gen PCI Express, but mobile CPUs generally only have access to a maximum of 8, meaning for half the potential bandwidth. However, the real bottleneck comes from Thunderbolt 4. This standard is limited to a mere 40 gigabits, or 5 gigabytes per second, and that's only the theoretical maximum. It may seem like a lot in terms of moving data to an external drive, but at just under 17% of the total bandwidth the GPU can use, it could be a real detriment to gaming performance. Running through synthetic benchmarks and things were looking pretty promising at first. The Time Spy graphics score of almost 17.5K is only 13% below a full desktop PC with the same graphics card. Firestrike's graphics score is far more negatively impacted by the eGPU dock, however, falling from over 47k to over 37k, more than a 20% reduction. And that wasn't the half of it. My first game of choice was Forza Horizon 5, which I have plenty of benchmark data from across the last couple of years. I tested the RTX 3080 Ti in my moderately priced gaming PC just a few weeks back, and when paired with a Ryzen 5 7500F over full bandwidth PCIe 4, it's capable of some pretty big numbers. At 1440p extreme with RT cranked up, it can reach 110fps with lows of 95. Based on my experience with Oculink last week, I was expecting maybe 80 to 90fps, but Boy was I disappointed. At those same settings, hooked up over Thunderbolt using the eGPU dock, I saw an average of 52 FPS, more than a 50% drop off from the desktop. 1% lows were even worse, more than 75% lower than the desktop at the same settings. I tried messing around in the menu to try and glean some more performance from the eGPU, but it wasn't having it. Quality DLSS added 1.5 frames to the average, Dropping to Ultra added just over 4 frames, or 5.5 with DLSS, and disabling ray tracing only lifted the average to 59.5 FPS. Of course, the benchmark isn't 100% representative of true gameplay, so I spent an afternoon playing on it, and um, yeah, it was horrible. Averages could climb into the 80s in the open world, but drops were frequent and distracting. You could maybe get used to it if you had no other option, but I wouldn't want to play like this if I didn't have to. Starfield is a great deal more demanding than Forza, but still within reach for a GPU like the 3080 Ti. Normally, anyway. In my review, it averaged 66 FPS in New Atlantis at 1440 Ultra without upscaling. This time around, once again, the numbers are cut in half. Well, not quite. In fact, the average dropped by almost 50% to 33.3 FPS. Quality DLSS only increased that to 36.7, and while enabling FSR frame generation does manage to claw back up to 66 FPS, 1% lows were reduced by about 35%. Cyberpunk 2077 isn't quite the GPU melting beast it used to be, or more accurately, nowadays more people have access to GPUs that can handle it, whereas other games have come up that are even more demanding and, in some cases, even less well optimised. That doesn't mean it's a cakewalk for the eGPU. At 1440 Ultra, without ray tracing, it only manages 47.8 FPS on average with 1% lows of 30.9. And, as usual, adding DLSS does practically nothing for performance. 
This does make driving a bit difficult, and it would make shooting pretty hard too, but surely this is just what you'd expect from this previous gen GPU, right? Nope. The 3080 Ti can run this at 82 FPS when paired with a desktop CPU and motherboard, so we're losing about 40% performance to the Thunderbolt connection. After a few weeks in purgatory, Nvidia's latest driver release means The Last of Us works with GeForce GPUs again. Such as it is. Typically, I'd expect the 3080 Ti to churn out a solid 80 plus at 1440 Ultra, and 12GB of VRAM is enough to ensure the frame times are pretty good too. Alas, the Thunderbolt dock cuts that down to about 55 FPS, and 1% and 0.1% lows are pretty weak as well. This is a far more stuttery experience than I'd expect from this tier of graphics card, but it does seem to be par for the course with eGPUs. The Oculink dock I tested last week scored remarkably similar numbers. Actually, slightly worse, probably due to that mini PC having a quad core CPU. On the AAA front, it's looking pretty dire for the Thunderbolt dock, but perhaps there's something good to be said about esports. Apex Legends is a lighter weight title that I usually run on my mini PCs when testing out integrated graphics, and this i9 with its Iris Xe with 96 execution units is generally good for about 60 FPS at 1080 low. When it comes to testing with something like the 3080 Ti, Apex can easily be held back by the CPU at lower settings, so this time I tested at 1440 high. This resulted in an average of 125 FPS with lows of 90, which is a pretty healthy experience, if a long way short of what the RTX is truly capable of. Paired once again with the Ryzen 5 and without Thunderbolt getting in the way, this card is capable of 100 FPS more than this, so again we're looking at a 40% performance loss. I've never tested CS2 with a 3080 Ti in a desktop PC before. I tend to think of it as a CPU test more than anything, but on this occasion I decided to give it a go, just to grab some numbers for comparison. At 1440 very high, it managed almost 250 FPS, with lows of 144. For once though, the dock didn't quite knacker the 3080 Ti as badly as it usually does. Oh, it still lost 25% on average, dropping to 190 FPS, and 1% lows fell all the way to 80, but this is way better than I'd expected, especially considering how badly the Oculink dock fared. So far, I haven't really compared the Thunderbolt dock to the Oculink from last week, and there's a reason for that. Neither mini PC represents ideal conditions for testing. This time around, the i9-13900H is actually helping the Thunderbolt setup attain higher frame rates than the Oculink did in several cases, though it's running extremely hot in the process. The heat doesn't seem to have that much bearing on performance. I tried Forza with the TDP turned down to 25 watts, and while that improved temps by about 10 to 15 degrees, it had no major effect on performance. However, it still has no realistic way of adding an Oculink port, so I'm afraid that an Oculink versus Thunderbolt comparison will have to wait till I get something with both Oculink and Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a CPU that can handle modern demanding games without cooking itself. Wrapping up then, as you've no doubt worked out by now, the GT13 Pro is something of a furnace. Geekom typically tune their Intel systems one of two ways. Either they keep the CPU on a short leash, like with the older Mini IT13 design, or they let the i9 boost higher for longer, resulting in better performance at the expense of thermal throttling under load. This design, like all of Geekom's other similar models, lacks any active cooling for the memory or SSDs, so while that all contributes to a nice quiet PC, it also means for some pretty toasty memory. If you are thinking of buying the GT13 Pro, I'm not saying you shouldn't. 
I'd be more inclined to recommend one of the externally almost identical A7s or A8s instead, as their Ryzen APUs are generally better performers at lower temps, but if you're ride or die for Intel, and the temps aren't a deal break for you, then I don't think this will be a major disappointment. However, these mini PCs seem to get refreshed on a pretty frequent basis, and my experience so far has shown that the new generation Intel Meteor Lake chips run a lot cooler, so maybe wait until you can get an Ultra 7 or Ultra 9 in this form factor. As for the eGPU dock, the page is actually pretty cool for an AliExpress project, and it seems to be gaining something of a following, with various talented people designing 3D printed housings to make it more desk friendly. If you have a relatively modern device that supports Thunderbolt 4 but not Oculink, it's definitely an option, and not as impractical as I'd have thought. However, even if your device has a powerful CPU that doesn't thermal throttle quite so hard as this one does, we're still talking about limiting a card like an RTX 3080 Ti to perform more like a 3060 in games, and that's a pretty big sacrifice to make. I have both the GT13 Pro and the TH3P4G3 linked in the description if you're interested in them, and there's discount codes available for the Geekom in both the official site and their Amazon pages. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.